Good evening. I wrap Singh with your Spider ETF wrap up, and this wrap up is for Thursday. And we're sitting here now, 28th of July, just about the end of the month. And what a great month for the marketplace and stocks. A big July, no question about it. Uh, and now what do you do? Well, let me explain where I think we're at and the whole craziness. I mean, a as a market analyst and as somebody who does a certain amount of academics, you, uh, you're shaking your head at this. <clears throat> you have two quarters losing back to back and the market takes off to the upside in stocks. Look, at IWM, SPY, DIA, uh, QQQ, all to the upside taking off. Now, what the heck? You get bear news in your rally. The only answer, the only answer, is it means the Fed's hands are going to be tied going forward. They can do another 100 basis points. Beyond that on interest rates, how far can they go without tipping the economy? The economy's already weak. <clears throat> you can't argue that two quarters of GDP back to back down isn't weakness. You may want to say it's not a recession because you're going to say the labor market is this strong. I buy into that, too. I don't argue that point. I buy into it. So where does that leave us then? Hmm. Stagflation? Probably. What is that? Stalling or declining of the economy, but inflation is persistently high. Seems to me that we're there. Do I know inflation will stay this high? No, we don't know if it's peaked or not peaked. I think you'd agree with that. We'll find out after the fact. But right now, I'm looking at metals soaring today. Oil still very, very strong. Grain prices very strong. They had been coming down and they've come back with a vengeance. Why? I think that in the metals and in the stock market, the market realizes the Fed's weakness and they're going to probe it. That's what I think is going on. I could be so wrong, but it makes so much sense. The Fed's going to go in September. It'll go again at the end of the year. But how much can they keep going before tipping us into a severe recession if you got two quarters of GDP down? I heard Ms. Yellen today. I heard Mr. Powell yesterday. And I've heard their arguments about labor. <clears throat> Where I thought more sense made sense today was Ms. Yellen. Remember, she is an ex-Fed chair. So she's Bright as can be, she knows both sides of the game. She's politicized now because she's on the Biden administration. As she said, she serves at the, at the pleasure of the president. But she knows her game. She talked about the strength of the dollar. This could tip economies all over the world if the dollar stays this strong. And that becomes another issue. And if you keep raising interest rates, in theory, if we go, others go. That could tip them. It's a very delicate ba balancing act. And if you saw Rick Santelli, if you saw all the experts from CNBC, and then you were watching as I do Bloomberg all day, you're scratching your head. This just doesn't make sense. But things don't have to make sense. You have to understand parts of the puzzle and where the market is going. So in meta, <coughs> I said that I thought the market is going to be at a key area here. Said this to you yesterday. Is it going to test that? It did. It was a successful test, by the way, in the sense you test it and you bounce back and you close near the day's high. You didn't collapse. The trend is down. The market's under the 18-day average. That's bearish. And the market is paying great attention to what number? The lower Bollinger Band and what else? The market's oversold. Oversold means you got a reading under 30. I have all the reasons for the pros, as bad as things are, on this test of the Bollinger Band to start covering short positions. I don't know if it'll exactly hit it or not. I see the resistance at 168.23, but if you're oversold, you remove a certain amount of the sellers. In AMC, as I said, I don't know if you're going to get the big follow through here back here. The market just seems to be ugly, stuck in this range, no trend. Obviously, 1837 is too high, but 1260 is probably a bit too low. You have a lot of good movies left for the summer. Apple. <coughs> Apple came out after the close, up 4%. Really good numbers. Tim Cook did a great job. His Chinese team did a fabulous job in procuring enough product to make the phones work. And now you got Apple 14 coming out. So this is going to be the darling of the market. However... 
I would never tell a client to buy into a Bollinger Band or 200-day average. I would tell them to take some money off the table. What I do like is the market, and let's see if we can get back to this to help us a little bit, if, it, if the service will let me do it. Yep, it's going to, so this is really good. You were embedded. You come in, you lose it yesterday. Any reading under 79 is a lost embedded reading, right? But, now watch this, lose it, and the only time you gain it back is the next day, which you did yesterday. If that occurs, it's a bear trap because you didn't get the bearishness and the market often tries to come up and go to the next key big number and they're staring you in the face. So if you're up 4% in the aftermarket, you're already into the upper Bollinger Band and the 200 day average. That's where I think the pros are coming out of the market. Neat way to be able to show it, and that, that's what I think is going on. In Disney, also showing nice. I didn't see all of the reports on Disney. I don't know if it even came out today or if it's tomorrow, but everything's, half the market's already come out with earnings, so you get dizzy with how many are coming out here. Mm -hmm. But it's an overbought market, or trying to embed. That's really what it's doing. In this area, still looking good with the market as a whole. Financial services embedded. So until the red line closes under 79, I contend the market's going to be a buyer on the brakes. And when you get that, then it goes back to at least the 18-day average. In the, um, let's get the next one, XLI, <clears throat> you're running at the upper Bollinger Band. You've, most of these days from back here have hit it. You backed away right here one day where you didn't hit, but you're back up and just running it. I think it'll culminate this rally between now and the 100-day average. I look for the market to fail in this general area. What, what's going on there? You're still getting building, and it's still looking good. Did you see uh, today, what was it, the Kansas City, I think, Fed came out? Numbers look great. XLI, so you can see that sector. Next sector, semiconductor. Okay, guess what was passed today? Can you believe they passed that bill? And guess who's a big winner? Possibly Nancy Pelosi's husband. He did buy into that. Did we not know that bill was going to pass? It, it, just waiting on the president's uh, desk now. He'll sign it, and away you go into that. And here, too, if we, if we take a good look, watch this. <clears throat> the market comes in embedded, loses the reading, gets it back yesterday and today, does just what it's supposed to, goes up for that new high. So if you take my enhanced Bollinger Band course, you're gonna learn these tricks. You have an edge with it most of the time. I wish I could tell you everything works all the time. Nothing works all the time, but I will say, stick my neck out big most of the time. You're gonna get an edge as to what the odds favor in that, uh, in that doing when the, those things occur. Home builders, now you're back up to the resistance area. It helped them today to see mortgage rates fall back to 5.3. It's still a terribly high number, but now they're going in the right direction. And if you're watching the futures, the back end, the 10 and the 30, still dropping in their yields. Energy sector, sideways action. The Biden administration, its wisdom is about to release another 20 million barrels so that we can produce more at the refineries and believe it or not, export the oil abroad. Are we supposed to use our strategic reserve to create that? Maybe they're saying that, uh, you know, with what's going on in Europe, they need it. I don't know, you know, but it seems odd to me. In gold, be careful here. I am bullish gold for the reasons I started out telling you now. The headwind is gone, but I'll bet the ranch. <laughs> that upper Bollinger Band is going to be a problem for the gold market. This is where the pros are going to take some money off the table. Same in the gold miners. Notice they lost their embedded reading. You went right to where you should. The 18-day average of closes. Copper. Upper Bollinger Band could be hit. You're in a problem area already in the market. I don't think you're going to run very far before you get more of a reaction down eventually. A G G T L T B N D. It sounds like a song. All to the upside because the market sees the Fed weakness. It is now a weakness. I know you're going to tell me, Ira, you don't know. They're going to raise rates September. I'm agreeing. They might raise them through the end of the year. I'm agreeing. They're not going that far in 2023. 
That's where they got you. The headwind has changed because of the weakness of these two GDP readings. Now, I'll eat my words if the GDP is revised the second one because it's the first read and it shows a positive reading. But at a 0.9 negative, it's going to have to be a big revision. And so I don't think I'm going to be wrong. In the UUP, the dollar, it sees what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Which way next? That's the problem the market has. So, you know, what kind of tools do you use in this market to try to get your entry and exit edge? The word is an edge, and, and that's what I want to talk to you about. To me, the edge comes from, if you can look at a market, see it diving during the day going up, typically on a 15-minute bar chart, let me just share that with you. And you apply to it a slow stochastic and you're looking at the traditional way, and the word is traditional, of the center line of the pivot, where's the resistance points, and then you put on it the overbought, oversold of the slow stochastic. I teach you how to do this in a three-part video series for free. No credit cards, not want any of that information from you in any way. I'm gonna show you how to do this because I use it during the day if I'm trying to come in for my clients and say, hey, here's a point, here's a point here, I want you to go in, here's the number, ah, it's not hitting it. Sometimes in the old days, I'd call them up, back up even, and say, hey, let's adjust the order because I'd see this on the pivot point. Why not take a look at it? Here's the thing, you already have the study. It's in your charting software. <clears throat> I've not seen any major charting package that doesn't have it, okay? This is a mainstay. It was taught to me personally by the guy that created this. I, I can't use his name because the NFA has barred him from the business for other things he did. But he is one of the great market analysts, uh, a great thinker. Uh, just got himself into certain troubles with the, uh, with the government. You, you don't play those games ever. And I cannot mention his name. That doesn't mean I can't talk that he didn't create this and I learned it from him. He ran a lot of business through my company. Uh, and. I saw the result of this. What did, in the end, what happened is he became too big for the market. He, I, he had my business. There was a company, Stotler, and a bunch of others at that time. And the orders were too big. People were doing well. I used to call him, come on, can't you take more managed money? Well, in the end, that didn't help because he, when you become bigger than the market, you, you at those days, more than electric markets in any manner, you overwhelm the market at times and, and the trade sees that. So you adjust. And over the years, I've learned how to make these adjustments with it. And I'd like to share the secret. So go to the website, free offers. You can click if you move your cursor right up here. You'll see an icon. Give that a click or better yet, call my staff. They'll get it right out to you. I'm Ira. Have a good day.